the booth now, and it's a tremendous pleasure to be uh, joined by Hall of Famer Jack Morris. And uh, Jack, I don't know how you describe what happened a couple of weeks ago in Cooperstown, or or even what happened to you here today. But uh, I would imagine your baseball career now has come full circle, and this is uh, unreal. It really is. I, I really have a tough time trying to show my emotion right now because I feel like it's it should be shared equally amongst not only our the guys on the field today and Rod part of that group, but you know everybody here. It's it's Detroit. It you know it gives us all a sense of pride. I think, and I certainly feel that way. But I, I think the fans feel that way too. I don't know how you felt about that ceremony down there, Jack. But I mean, it was amazing. I mean, the amount of love that they showered you with here this weekend. I mean, it's it's amazing. It's mind-boggling. It, it takes me back to when you threw that no-hitter the very first week of the season. And when we got back to yeah. Detroit, it was my first time at Tiger Stadium. And when they announced your name, the round of applause that you got sent chills through my body. And you get that same kind of experience here and this kind of stuff. Yeah, and it's a long time since that, you know, those days. There's a lot of fans here that never saw us play, but the uh, you know the legend lives I guess just like uh, you know I'm going up there on the wall with a lot of names that are uh, no longer with us uh, and few that still are but you know that's what makes it so unique about Detroit this is one of the original baseball teams when the game started so it's so rich in history we're in the second here with Mitch Garver leading it off and Jack Morris who had his number retired today here in Detroit and uh, he is out on the left center field wall now. Jack, a couple of nights ago, we had the Hall of Fame dinner at the Motor City Casino Hotel, and, and you were telling the story about how you're finally going to look out to that wall, and you're going to see your number out there, and you're going to think to yourself, well, we can't use the word that you described. <laughs> but it's going to be really kind of amazing for you to think about what has transpired in your career and how things have <laughs> come to this point. But it really is something that I think when you look back, all those innings, all those bus rides, all those plane rides. I mean, it, it, it finally has been worth it for you. Yeah, and I, I really find it hard to believe that anybody ever plays for those reasons. You know, we played for a world championship, and we were able to do that here in Detroit one time. Um, but it, it's just kind of, I just have a tough time again trying yeah. to put it all in words. It, it's, it's a super warm fuzzy for me to be on that wall. And, uh, you know, to know that Tram's coming up there next couple weeks with me. Uh, you know, it gives credibility to what we did for the 80s here in Detroit. You know, you talk about Sparky Anderson and, and the, the influence that he had on you and your career, but when he talked to you about starting to complete games, he wanted you to learn how to finish games, that really helped take your career in a whole different direction, didn't it? That is line to left field, and it's going to be caught there by Gerber. Coming home to score the game's first run, though, is Gerber. Yeah, Rod, what it did is it made me realize he's got enough confidence in me to give me the chance to figure these things out late. And I knew I had the endurance to be able to do it. I knew I was strong enough to do it. Um, and I had done it a few times prior to 1980, and I had a pretty good year in 79. But there was something about him saying, look it, this is what I need out of you. We've got our bullpen's going to get toasted and it sounds familiar right? From <laughs> what, what goes on in it today's does. game you need somebody to, to stretch it out and give those guys a break so mm -hmm. that they have at least one day of five to rest and mm -hmm. Sparky told me you're my guy you got to figure it out yourself I can't tell you how to do it you know it was great to see your uh, teammate your battery mate Lance Parrish who by the way caught the first pitch that you threw today and, and talk about what Lance meant to you because Obviously, you need some help along the way. You yeah. got plenty of it with Lou and Tram behind you, but throwing to Lance Parrish all those years, uh, what was your relationship like? Incredible. Um, we learned a lot. We grew up together, and I, I consider him a man's man. Uh, you know, he got the nickname Big Wheel, and it, it was <laughs> not just about his physical size, it's just about his mentality. He was a tough guy mentally. Uh, he had to handle all sorts of different personalities on the mound, and mine was as unique as anybody, but. He, he had a unique way of, of making you feel comfortable. And I knew for, you know, for me, when I learned that forkball and I knew I had to throw it down in the zone, 
and a lot of times bounce it on purpose, I knew that he <laughs> absolutely would gobble that ball up, yeah. keep it in front of him, and I'd get an out out of it. So I had more and more confidence knowing that it never affected him. He never once complained about a ball in the dirt. Never once, and I don't know how many times I beat him up. Who had the biggest influence on you, Jack, from uh, in your professional career, from a pitching standpoint? Who had the biggest influence in your career? Well, I got to believe it's Sparky. I mean, Sparky had a unique way of knowing when to give us a pat on the back, knowing when to give us a kick in the pants, uh, calling us out when we needed to be called out and encouraging us and giving us confidence. Uh, you know, I've had some really good pitching coaches. Roger Craig was awesome. Uh, Roger and I bumped heads a lot. <laughs> um, but it's because we had the same desires. Roger wanted me to be successful and... Uh, we didn't necessarily have the same mindset about how to pitch because Roger was more of an off-speed breaking, breaking ball pitcher. I was a fastball guy that wanted to challenge him. So we had some disagreements. But once I figured out Roger was in my corner, I listened to him more. Yeah. And uh, kind, of a, kind of a lesson to learn for coaches and, and players today. It takes a while. It takes trust in order for you to understand that somebody's there to help you. And, you know, Roger was that guy too. Yeah. Adrian to the batter here with two outs. Well, I would imagine, guys, you know, they've had a lot of success to be able to get to the big leagues. You guys have figured, you know, we know what we're doing here. Now you get to the major leagues and someone's trying to tell you maybe we should try something new. So you've got to have that flexibility. Yeah, it's always that wonderful day for every player to get the first call to the big leagues, right? Rod remembers that every player remembers yep. it. And then all of a sudden, you got to figure out how to stay there. Yeah, right. And that's where the coaches come in, and they know they've had the experience, and Today's coaches might be a little different because they can show you analytics. They can show you different video to, to help you with what they're trying to explain. Um, but ultimately, you've got to go out there and do it. So you have to have trust in them. Fly ball to right field for Reyes. And that'll end the inning. The Twins get a run. We'll be back with more with Jack Morris. And the number 47 has officially been retired here in Detroit.